Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome to a slightly different video. We're still on the lines of manager career mode, of course this channel is built around career mode for me. But it's not going to be the live for career mode, it's not a brand new career mode, it's in fact five things you must do when you start a brand new manager career mode. Now before we get into today's video, I just want to say a huge big thank you for love and support on the channel and I hope guys that this video is very informal for you guys. I hope it teaches you maybe new tricks and new things that you can do when you start a career mode. And for me, I pick five things that when I start any career mode, these are the first five things that I do that help me from the start and help me in the long run. I think they're very optional, as though the title and the thumbnail will say five things you must do when you start career mode. They're not must, they're just things that I am advising you guys to do at the start to make your guys' career modes a little bit easier and also to make your life a little bit easier. But first, let's get into creating a brand new manager career mode save. So just for the video purpose, the team that we are going to become a manager of is Chelsea FC. Now, very early on into you starting a career mode, before you actually even get into the career mode, the first topic comes up. And as we click Chelsea... The first one is actually a financial takeover. This in the bottom right. And let me explain as to why this is one of the important things from the get-go. So for you guys that watch the Live Poor Career Mode, you will know that I started and put an extra injection of financial takeover cash in of 100 million. The reason I'd done that was because when I started the Live Poor Career Mode, the transfer window in real life hadn't closed. And because my Live Poor Career Mode is realistic... I put in an extra 100 million in case Liverpool, after Diego Jota, was to sign any other players. So I could buy that player without touching my transfer budget in which the board have given to me. So by putting an extra 100 million in, if we had went and signed, for example, Kula Bali, I could have bought Kula Bali and used the 100 million injection that I gave myself at the start of the career mode. And then I've still got my cash to play with that the board gave me. The reason financial takeover is one of the very starting ones, is because once you go past this page, you can't actually do a financial takeover anymore. In previous FIFAs, and as we've known for years, you used to go to the marketplace, and you'd spend your points, and you could buy financial takeovers. You would have five financial takeovers. Once you purchased it, you would go into the career mode, and whichever career mode you next loaded, the financial takeover and the money would be injected into that career mode. We don't actually have the E8 marketplace anymore. So if you do not select the financial takeover at the start of career mode, when you're on this page and you're choosing your difficulty, your half length, your currency, European competitions, negotiation strictness, international job office transfer window and all that goodness, if you don't select a financial takeover from this page and you start your career mode with it disabled, you will not be able to at any point get an injection of cash from the board. So what I would recommend to anyone is always having a financial takeover. Even if you don't want to use it, the money being there just in case for later on down the line, if you want to explore different options, if you want to bring in a superstar, having the financial takeover there will be massive. Now, of course, on all the previous FIFAs, you would buy the financial takeover. You wouldn't necessarily know how much is going to be injected. It could be 10 million, it could be 100 million, it could be half a billion. But this year what you do is it's automatically disabled, you click into it and you have the option of a 10 million transfer injection, a 50 million transfer budget injection, a 100 million transfer budget injection, 200 million transfer budget injection or half a billion pound. They are your only options to explore. 10 million, 50 million, 100 million, 200 million and 500 million. Half a billion. Now, if you're wanting to start a realistic career mode, maybe just sticking for the 50 or 100 million just to have that extra bit of cash there. Now, I know a lot of people enjoy doing sort of road to glories where you pick a championship team. Maybe even coming down to the extra 10 million will make it a lot more interesting. But I think the thing for me, as I was explaining earlier on, is once you go past this page, if you leave it disabled, you go into a career mode like with Chelsea and they've got 70 million. That's all you have, 70 million. So if you want to go and sign Messi or Ronaldo, it's not going to happen unless you sell on a load of players. So for me, having a little bit of backup cash there, having some cash that's sort of a safety net of injecting an extra 100 million just in case 
you want to sort of reach out from it being realistic and you want to go and sign a megastar, you want to go and sign Leo Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, maybe even go to the 200, maybe even go to the half a billion if you guys want. But the number one of my five things you must do at the start of career mode is to have a financial takeover. And just because it's there, it doesn't mean that you need to spend it. So I could inject 500 million here into Chelsea. That doesn't mean I need to go and spend it. But if one day I think, do you know what? I want to go and buy some big players. I want to change up the team completely. I want to get rid of Timo Werner. I want to go and sign Mbappe. Having that half a billion pound, that 500 million there, is massive. It makes a huge difference. So for me, regardless of what type of career mode you're doing, whether you're just doing one for fun, whether you're doing a road to glory with a smaller team, whether you're going to pick a team from League 1 or League 2 and come all the way to the Premier League and try and win the Champions League, even if you're picking a Chelsea, a Liverpool, a City that have plenty of funds from the get-go, always having a bit of backup cash and just having it there because, as I say, once you go into the career mode, you cannot get these funds. It's gone. You've got to stick with what you've got. So it doesn't make any harm you guys choosing a financial takeover offer of either the 10 million, the 50 million, the 100 million, the 200 million, or even the 500 million to have there as a safety net in case you want to change it up. So because with Chelsea, we've already got a good amount of money. I'm only going to take the 200 million transfer financial takeover, get an influx of cash into the beginning of the career mode of 200 million plus whatever we've already got of probably 70, 80 million. I can focus on spending that 70, 80 million. And then if I want to fall back and sign some big superstars or we have a bad injury and I need to bring someone else in, I've got that money to fall back on. So it's like at any point in the career mode, I've then been able to have a financial takeover as such because the money's always just sat there. So we're going to select 200 million. But the first one for today's video, a five things you must do. Number one, is just take a financial takeover. Whether you spend it or not, that's up to you. Number two on the list is getting to know your players, which ones you want to keep and which ones you want to sell. So straight away, you need to go over to the squad hub. And the reason this is important is to stop a load of spam emails. You need to understand who is going to be your starting 11, who has got a future at your club and who doesn't. If they have a future at your club, you straight away need to start blocking offers i can't stress this enough but you guys will probably already know for the people that don't block offers that the amount of offers you will have for players in the liverpool career mode now although i edit the video so i can cut a lot of it out i think i received seven or eight different transfer offers for sadio Mane, and it's just the fact that you get back to the central after you've played a game or you've done something and it's offer after offer after offer so it's as simple as doing this step to clear that up we go down the list, so we say Kepa, for example. We click him, we block off it. Now, if there is a player we want a loan list or transfer list, as you're doing this, you, of course, transfer list them or loan list them. So, Willy Caballero will go ahead and add to the transfer list. We're happy to move him on. Mendy, we want to block offers. We don't want people being able to put offers in. Ben Chilwell is part of the future of Chelsea. We block offers. And Marcus Alonso, we want to sell. You guys get the gist. So, you go through this whole entire squad hub each individual player and you decide whether you want to keep them loan them or sell them if you want to keep them you need to block offers players like Babbitt you might want to put out on loan he's still young he's only 25 left back 75 you might want him to go out and get a bit of experience Emerson I know Emerson's not a a huge uh, fan for the Chelsea fans I know he's not a, a huge player that people enjoy so we may add him to the transfer list Come down to Rudiger, we don't want him going anywhere, so we block offers. Wakely's only young, we can put him out on loan, we may want to sell him. But the important thing, guys, is when you get to the big players like your Thiago Silva, you don't want to sell him, so you block offers. You care to me, you don't want to sell him, so you block offers. And by blocking the offers for your big name players, or even some players that you might just enjoy and want to play with, by blocking offers, you won't receive offers coming in left, right, and center for these players. And at the end of the day, like for the Liverpool Cream, my whole starting 11, you block offers on them because you don't want to be getting offer after offer after offer because you've already made it clear to anyone that's made an offer, look, I don't want to sell this player. So instead of having to constantly decline offer after offer, just go into the squad hub, 
find all the players you want to keep hold of, click in, block offers, and you won't receive a single loan or transfer offer for that player. So any team now that had Reese James on their shortlist or were interested in them won't be there anymore because we've blocked any offers coming in from any other clubs. Third on the list is training. Now, as long as you've just done that second step before this one, you're in a great position to do this step because you've gone through the squad hub and you've worked out what players you want to keep at the club, what players you might want to see grow, which players you want to move on, which players you want to loan out. But the important thing of training is to understand how the new training mechanics work. Most people will probably just click the right stick and quick sim without actually going into training. And if you're doing that, you're making a massive mistake. What you actually need to do is firstly click in and look at the three training scenarios that we're doing. We've got inside the zone dribbling, defending scenarios, and extreme hot potato. But more importantly, you need to look at the players that are doing these scenarios. Christian Pulisic, Mason Mount, Kai Havertz, Olivia Giroud, Tammy Abraham for the first one. Aspilicueta, Thiago Silva on the second one, Jorginho, Kovacic, and Werner on the third one. This is completely wrong. You don't want to be doing training for any players in your starting eleven because of fitness. What you're going to do here, you see, is you're going to train players that are on your bench and in your reserves. By doing this, the players that are on the bench and in the reserves that don't keep the sharpness at a high, don't keep the fitness at a high, you're training them so if you need to bring them on as a sub or you need to play a rotated team, they've got the sharpness there. The players in your starting 11 will gain fitness from rest days and recovery days and they will receive sharpness from simply playing football. After you've played for a month or two into a career mode, most of the starting 11 will have sharpness of 90 plus. You don't need to train them to get that sharpness. So what we'll do is we'll go into the inside of the zone dribbling and we will change the players. Now you can see along the top, we've got starting 11, which is the starting 11 that we've currently got defaulted now to pick one of these players. Don't pick anyone from your starting 11. You don't need to. They're going to gain fitness from rest days and recovery days. They're going to gain sharpness from actually playing. It's your starting 11. They're going to play week in and week out. So in fact, press the right bumper, which will take you over to the bench. Some of these players you can train, some of them you might not want to, you might want to RB again or R1 if you're on PlayStation, and go to the reserves and pick a couple of these players. Now for me, I tend to always look at the bench because bench players are players that are going to come on for a player in the starting eleven, and you want to make sure their fitness is right up there. So we've already got Giroud and Tammy Abraham, but I'm now going to put... Zayak in there. In fact, what I actually need to do is I need to go and remove players. So we'll remove Kai Havertz, Christian Pulsic, and Mason Mount because they, of course, are from our starting 11. We've now, as you can see on the right, got three empty slots. I'm going to go over to the bench. I'm going to put Zayak in there. I'm going to put Kovacic in there. Moving this player will replace. That's not a problem. We'll move him over to this. And then I'm going to put Callum Hudson Adoy in there. So we've now got Giroud, Abraham, Zayak, Kovacic, and Hudson Adoy. All with 100% fitness, which is going to drop, and all with 50% on the sharpness. The sharpness is going to go up, their fitness is going to come down, but they're going to gain that fitness back from their rest days, and they're also not players that are playing week in and week out. So we can click done on that one and advance. We've now started the first one with players that don't start in this Chelsea team. We move over to the second one, and we do exactly the same. I won't go through the third one, I just want to give you guys the idea. So defending scenarios, we want to pick defenders that aren't in the starting 11. So let's change these players because Thiago Silva and Azpilicueta are starters in this Chelsea team. So we remove Thiago Silva, we remove Azpilicueta. We then go over to the bench. There's no, we could probably put Reese James in there. So because we've got a defender, a right back in there, we'll stick Reese James at right back in there. Reese James might actually be a starter, to be honest, but in this career mode, He's starting on the bench, so I'm happy to put him in. We're then going to move over to the reserves now, where we've got plenty of options at the back. Rudiger, Alonso, Christiansen, Emerson, Tamori, Babe. We could even put centre mids in there if we want to. We could put Drinkwater, we could put Gilmore. We could put any of these options. We've also got Wakely at the end. But you've got to work out if Thiago Silva or Azpilicueta or Zuma weren't going to play, who's coming in from the bench, and you need them to have decent sharpness and fitness. It's probably going to be the likes of Rudiger 
or Christensen. So for, for example, for this one, we'll put Rudiger in there. So we've now got Reese James and Rudiger on the defending scenarios. I can roll straight in now to the third point because it's sort of still within training. When you first start a career mode, most people will just simulate. And I'll show you what happens when you simulate. We simulate all. Yes, we advance. And we get Ds throughout. D in inside the zone dribbling, D in defending scenarios, and D in extreme hot potato. The fourth point of today's video is make sure you do the training drills. Because if you don't, every time you simulate a drill, you will receive the best grade that you ever have. And at the start, it is default to a D. That is the best grade. You can see where it says drill result, and it says D on all three. To the left of that, it says best grade, NA, not applicable. That is because we haven't done the drill and we haven't earned an A, a B, a C, a D, an E or an F. You will always get the best grade, but D is the lowest grade you can get. So if you get a C, if you get a B, if you get an A, when you simulate it next time, whatever the highest grade you've got by doing the drill, your drill results will simulate to that exact letter. So I will show you now in the next part, I'll advance in a little bit of time till the next training session, I will manually do one of the drills and then I'll show you that next time around when we simulate it, if I've got an A in that drill, it will automatically simulate for that. There is no point in doing the whole season without doing the drills because you get Ds throughout, which drops you 10% in fitness and only boosts you 2%. So you can see Reese James has dropped 10 in fitness, which isn't too bad, but he's only gained 2 in sharpness from a D. If you'd have got a C, it would have been like a plus four. If you got a B, it would have been a plus six. If you get an A, it's a plus 10. You may as well be getting the best grades and ranking up that sharpness as quick as you can, even by spending half an hour on actually manually doing the drills. So I had a rest day, and now I'm back to training. You can see again, this time around, three completely different drills. Collect the trophies, interceptor, pass to the target. Again, it's selected players from the start at 11. You need to manually go in and change these players, which I'll do and cut out because I've just shown you guys how to do it. But do not be training and doing drills with starting 11 players. Stick with the bench, stick with the reserves. Right, so I've swapped out all the players to all bench players or reserve players. And we can see again that the best grade in the top left, if we look at collect the trophies, is NA. I Meaning I haven't done it, it's not applicable. So I'm simply going to get a D for this one and I'll show you guys if we click into it and I simulate just this drill drill result I get a D again now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to play the interceptor so instead of simulating it I'm actually going to play it I'm going to try and get the best grade I possibly can and then next time round when I simulate the interceptor uh, drill the training drill I will get whatever the best grade I have so I'll try and get an A maybe even a B for this one and show you guys the next time I simulate it watch the grade that I get. So thankfully, first time round, I managed to get an A on the interceptor. So you can now see the interceptor is not highlighted. I unfortunately can't move over to it. But drill result was an A. Now my best grade is an A. Of course, the D is just for default. If we are to simulate pass to the target, I will get a D no matter what. I'm never going to get better than a D. I'm never going to get worse than a D. But until I actually do the drill, I can't get a better grade. Now, I will advance again to another training day. I will load up the drill interceptor. I will put Reese James, Rudiger, and Christiansen on it. I will simulate it. And instead of getting the usual default D, I will now get an A because I have actually got an A from playing the drill. So I've advanced in a little bit more time. We're in our next training day. We have timed lob through pass, pass to goal, and stop the wall. We don't have interceptor, but we will go in and change the drill to interceptor. It's a defending scenario, and you can see now that defending scenarios has got NA in the bottom right, meaning we haven't done the drill, we're going to receive a D. But Interceptor now has an A, so we'll go ahead and click Interceptor. We're going to deselect the players, because of course we want to be using bench players and reserves, so we don't want Giroud, we want Reese James on it. Yeah. We also want Rudiger, and we want Christiansen. We can give a done on that in advance. You'll see now in the top left, the best grade is still an A because, of course, we played it and got an A. Now, when I simulate, in fact, I'll simulate all the drills. Of course, the two on the right path to goal and stop the wall, we haven't done. So we know we're going to receive a D there. But in the top left, the important one, the interceptor, as we simulate all, advance, 
The drill result is an A because that is the highest grade we've ever received, which means we're always going to lose eight fitness, but we're going to gain eight sharpness. Now, the fitness is always going to go up on the fact that you have training days and recovery days. So, yes, Reese James, Rudiger, Christiansen have dropped from 100 to 92 last time round. They've had recovery and rest days, so gone back to 100. We've now dropped them another eight, but we've gained another eight sharpness. Doing this another five or six times will have them at 100% fitness and nearly 100% sharpness. Whereas path to goal, we got minus six on the fitness, only two sharpness. And the same again on stop the ball, minus six on fitness and only two sharpness. What is the point in just gaining two sharpness but losing six fitness throughout the whole season? You may as well spend, like I'm advising to you guys now, five things you must do at the start of Cree mode. Go and play every single drill. B's okay, but try and get A's on them all. But if you're struggling, just accept the B. Go and get A's and B's throughout all the drills. So every training session, go in, find the training session you haven't done, manually do it, get an A or a B, move on to the next one. Go and get A's and B's throughout every single training session, and then you don't have to click into training anymore. You can just quick sim them because you know you've completed them all, and the players are either going to get an A or a B. The important thing is... Every different drill is always going to manually select the players for you. So you can see path to goal and stop the wall had players from the start and 11 in it. You need to make sure that you're taking those players out. You don't want Ben Chilwell and Azpilicueta, Kante, Kovacic. You don't want players like that in the drills. They're going to gain fitness and sharpness from playing. That is why the likes of Ben Chilwell and Azpilicueta are already on 62 sharpness. That's because we've already simulated two preseason games and they're gaining sharpness from playing. But if you look at Reese James on the left, he hasn't played a single game this season, but he's got 64% sharpness. That's because we're training him and we're training him right. We're getting him A's and B's throughout, meaning the sharpness is going to go up and move at the same pace as players that are actually playing. The moral of the story for this point, guys, is don't train players that are in your starting 11. Train the bench. Train the reserves, so if you pick up injuries or need to make substitutes, you've got players that can come in that have got the sharpness, got the match fitness, and are raring to go. And the final and fifth point that you should do when you start a career mode, and you probably could have done this when you were doing number two. You could do this at the same time. The order doesn't really matter, but I would certainly, if you're going to offload players and you're going to sell players, probably don't train them. There's no point because you're going to sell them or loan them out. Only train players on the bench and reserves that you're going to keep and want to play with in whatever career mode team you're at. But by doing two first, which was option two of doing the going through and blocking offers and transfer listing and loan listing, you can then work out for the training which players you want to train. But while you're doing number two, you could also do point number five, which is going back into the squad hub and sorting out contracts. I have seen so many career mode YouTubers later down the line, one season in, two season in, three season in, have offers come in for players that they don't want to sell. And the reason this happens, and they have no choice in the matter, unfortunately, is because their contract runs out and a team signs them up on a free. Now, I'll tell you guys how you get around that, and I'll tell you a way to avoid this. So if you go over to financial, you can see the very end column here as we move across from position to name to age to value to wage to contract. You can press X and sort it into order. By scrolling to the top, it will show you the players that have the least remaining time on their contract. The least at the moment is one year. If any of these players with one year left on their contract, you want to keep and have long term at the club, you need to, at the start, offer them a new contract. Now, let's just take Olivier Giroud, for example. He's got one year left on his contract. When we get to the January transfer window in six months' time, he's only going to have six months left on his contract, which I'm sure you guys will know from many FIFAs, this is the way it works. Once they get to six months left on their contract, other teams can approach them to buy them on a free. They don't get them in January. They get them at the start of the second season. Once their contract is completely run down, they terminate their contract, it's run out, and they move on a free to a new club. The club that gets the player doesn't send you a penny. They don't buy the player. They get them for a free. They just have to offer them a contract. Let's take Tamori, who's still very young. 
I'll also tell you guys another thing that you need to do while you're offering these players contract, and Tamori's going to be a great example. He has a release clause. If you have a player that you do not want to lose to a release clause, because there's two options with Tamori now. Either a team comes in and tries to buy him out for his release clause, or in six months' time, they're going to try and get him on a free. And if he wants to go, he's going to go. The way you avoid this is when you first initially get that email saying, we'll use Borussia Mönchengladbach for the example still. Borussia Mönchengladbach have activated the Tomori's release clause of 29.4 million. The way you avoid actually selling them is simply going in and offering them a new contract, but taking the release clause out. By taking the release clause out and him signing a new contract, it cancels the offer coming in and disregards the transfer release clause the Borussia Mönchengladbach have offered. Also, the fact if Borussia Mönchengladbach in six months tried to sign him on a free, the same things happens again. Go and offer him a new contract, and then his contract doesn't end at the end of the season, meaning they can't get him on a free. So the main thing you need to do when you're looking at people's contracts is work out, A, do you want to sell them? And even if you want to sell them and they've only got a year left on their contract, offering them a bigger contract will help with their value. A player with five years left on their contract will be worth more than that same player with only one year left on their contract because the other teams will be looking at it. He's only got a year left on his contract. He hasn't signed a new contract, which makes the other teams think that he's not happy at the club and he's willing to move. Otherwise, the club would have offered him a new contract and he would have signed it. He still has value at 14 million, but in terms of now his contract, he's actually worth more. He's got no release clause, so no team can come in in six months and get him on a free and no one can activate his release clause. So what I would always do is... Always do the contract uh, column into sort. Go through who's got a year left, maybe even two years, and offer the people you want a contract extension. So Conor Gallagher, if you're looking to sell him, still go and offer him a better contract. He's currently on loan, so we can't anyway. Brown's on loan. Batshuayi's on loan. Piazon's on loan. Van Ginkel is on loan. Willy Caballero, he's obviously going to be retiring, I assume, at the end of the season. Yeah, retiring at the end of the season. We have also transfer list to them. Probably no one's going to come in and buy him because he's retiring at the end of the season. We can't offer Giroud a contract. And I'm assuming, oh, we can offer Thiago Silva, who's only just signed. He's only got a year left. We can delegate once again. Let's see how much he's on. He's on 84 at the moment. Let's delegate. We'll start at uh, 120. Now, he's not going to extend by too much. We'll go up to 200. So we'll click that. He's crucial. That's fine. He's going to put an extra year on his contract, so he's going to have two years. He doesn't want a release clause, which is great, and he wants to take 120 grand a week. We will accept on that. He's now got two years. We've secured him at the club for another two years, and there's no release clause, so no one can come in and sign him. And that is the gist of this fifth and final point. Go through your players. Work out who you want to sell. If there's someone you want to sell, for example, if we were going to sell Willy Caballero, and he didn't retire at the end of the season, offer him more years on his contract, because then when it comes to selling and play, teams won't be looking at getting him on a free in six months' time. They'll have to put the money up front. And you guys will know that when you go in for a play, if they've got a year left on their contract, the board will say to you, look, he's only got a year left on his contract. Let's offer a little bit less. You want to go down the list and be focusing on that right column. If you look where their overall is, if you come down a little bit, which I'll be showing you on screen now, you can see release clause. Go down the list, and as long as it says none, happy days. If one of them has a release clause, and it's a player that you want either to keep at the team or you want to sell, but you want to sell for more than the release clause, you need to offer them a new contract. But as we seem to be going down the list, oh, there we go. Billy Gilmore. He's got three years on his contract, but he's got a 10 million release clause. Now, he's worth 4 million now. As he grows, I know he's got a huge potential. He will outgrow his release clause. So when he gets his value to 15, 16, 17 million, a team will come in and activate that release clause and try and get him. So all you do is you delegate. He's on 22.5. We'll start at it. Let's go 28. We'll go up to 55. We offer it. He's going to extend by two years, putting him on a five-year contract. He's released. He's got rid of his release clause. There's no release clause. And he wants 28K a week. We accept that. And Billy Gilmore has now got five years at the club. And he's got no release clause. And that is all you need to do. But they are the five things, ladies and gentlemen, that I think you need to do. Must things you need to do when you start a brand new career mode. A, number one, a financial takeover. Because once you've got past that first page, you can't get it at any point in the game. Make sure you're training non-starters. 
Make sure for the training drills you've manually got A's and B's. Don't just default them to D's and continue to quick sim. There's no point. Go and spend the time. Go and put the effort in. Go and put the work in. Get A's and B's so your players keep their sharpness and match fitness at an utmost high. Make sure you're blocking offers for players you don't want to sell. Make sure you're putting players out on loan that you're not going to use. Otherwise, they'll just decrease in the reserves. And if there's any players you want to sell, make sure you add them to the transfer list straight away so teams know when they look on the transfer list. Oh, Chelsea have listed Giroud. We like Giroud. We'd like Giroud at this team. We'll look at buying him. He's on the list so teams know to buy him. And then the final point, which is what we've just gone over now, which is contracts. Go through the contracts. Don't leave anyone on a one-year contract because come January, teams will start activating release clauses if they've got them. Teams will be trying to buy them on a free. So if they've only got a year left, even if you don't want them at the club and you're going to sell them, still extend their contract. You'll get more money for them. You won't risk losing them on a free. And of course, go down the list. See if anyone's got a release clause. If they have got a release clause and you want to keep them or you maybe want to sell them in the future but for more than what their release clause is, offer them a new contract, remove that release clause and you are rearing to go. Hopefully these five things you must do at the start of career mode have been helpful. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably already do this, but I was originally going to do this video at the very start of FIFA 21, but I've been grinding out the Liverpool career mode, but I thought bringing you guys a video showing you what I do at the start of every career mode to help me in the long run and at the start of career mode and stop spam emails and make sure I'm getting the best sharpness and fitness for my players, I thought I'd bring you guys a video. So hopefully this video, five must things that you do on career mode when you first start on FIFA 21 has been helpful. Hopefully you guys, if you haven't already done some of these things, you're going to go and do them and try them out. But that is going to do it for today's video, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Drop a comment down below. Don't forget to ding dong that bell. And I've been Massive Brad. Peace out.